Hey everybody, today we're going to be unboxing and putting together my new Grizzly G0715P table saw. We're going to be doing the basic installation and we're also going to be converting it over from 220 to 110 power. So come on, let's go uh, put together my new toy. The G0715P comes with cast iron wings that install with a series of six bolts. The cast iron wings are heavy, so make sure that you've got a helper for this step or a fixture that the wings can rest on as you adjust and connect them. Before installing, make sure that the edges of the cast iron wings are free from debris and burr, bumps and machining marks that might interfere with a perfect fit. Knock them down with a file before installation if you find any. You can see that I used an adjustable roller to hold the wings in place while I made adjustments. I placed the wings roughly where they needed to be and gave the three bolts that connect them to the saw a few twists just to keep them in place. Then, using a level to check for accuracy, I moved the wings into their final location and twisted the bolts as tight as can be. It's important for the wings to be perfectly level from front to back and from side to side and that there's no ridge detected in between the saw's table and the cast iron wings. So make sure you test liberally with that level to ensure that you get this step right before moving on. Next, you need to install the front and back rails. Each rail connects to the tabletop with a series of bolts, washers, and nuts. It's pretty self-explanatory, and there's really only one way the holes line up, so you can't accidentally get the rails mixed up or backwards. The most important part of this step is to make sure that the rails are level from end to end. I used a combination square to read the distance from the tabletop to the top of the rail on one side, and then adjusted the height of the rail on the other end to match before I tighten the bolts completely. Once the rails are installed, there's a tube that needs to be installed on top of the front rail that guides the fence. Again, there's really only one way the holes can match up, so you can't really screw this up. The G0715P comes with a Biesemeyer style fence which floats slightly above the table and locks down on the front rail. It's critical that the fence be parallel to the miter slots and the blade, as well as perpendicular to the tabletop. The fence has six set screws for making fine adjustments. Slide the fence down onto the front rail and lock it into place to the right of the miter slot. If the fence isn't perfectly aligned with the edge of the slot, use the adjustments on the front and back of the fence's guide to correct the alignment. Later, after we install the blade, we can fine tune this fit using finger gauges to check for space between the fence and the blade. You'll also want to check for the vertical fit of the fence. The fence should ride about 1 16th of an inch just above the tabletop, so it can easily skip over fine debris. Adjust the vertical fit using the two adjustments on the top of the fence's guide rail. After making this vertical adjustment, I then verified that the fence was still perpendicular to the table by using a combination square and finger gauges and made adjustments as necessary. The blade is easy to install. Raise the blade height to the maximum height using the height adjustment wheel, then use your fingers to remove the throw plate. Use the locking pin on the trunnion to lock the shaft in place, and use the provided wrench to remove the nut from the trunnion. Drop the blade in place, screw the nut back onto the trunnion, and lower the blade back down. Installing the blade guard or the riving knife is easy too, and you don't even need to remove the throw plate to do it. The rear of the throw plate provides an opening to get at the spring-loaded pin that locks the guard in place. Pull back the locking pin, drop the blade guard into place, and release the pin back into position. Grizzly has made switching the blade guard in and out so easy that woodworkers might actually use it. The G0715P comes pre-wired for 220 volts. Since I don't have 220 power out in my shed, I had to convert my saw to 110. Unfortunately, the video of that process didn't turn out so great. Fortunately, Grizzly has made it really easy, and the instructions are in the manual. You snip off the plug and replace it with a 110 volt, 20 amp plug. Then you open up the wiring compartment on the side of the motor and rotate two jumpers 90 degrees to the left and to the right. Finally, you replace the breaker on the side of the switch with a $10 part you can purchase off their website at the same time you buy your saw. It's all in the manual and you can easily convert your saw over in about 10 minutes. All right, so I just finished setting up the saw. Um, the first thing that I ran into, which was not a big deal at all, was that when I turned the saw on, the blade wouldn't move. Um, the motor ran just fine, but the blade would just stay in place. I could see it like kind of chimmy a little bit when I turned it on. Um, and I immediately realized that the, uh, the belt just wasn't tensioned enough. And that's a real easy change on this. 
basically you come over here, you open up the cabinet, there's a set screw right there that holds the motor in place and you loosen that set screw, you hold the motor down to tension the belt and then you tighten it back up. So that solved that problem. Um, now I'd like to tell you a couple things that I really like about this saw, just first impressions. Um, first thing is it came, it actually came with two different uh, throw plates, one for a straight cut and one for a uh, an angle cut or a uh, actually it would be great for dado cuts as well um i would like to see a zero uh zero clearance insert plate that would be kind of nice but um i understand that uh you know not something that everybody needs or doesn't realize they need it right away um some things that i really like about this too is that it comes with not only a pretty robust blade guard Okay, um, but that blade guard has a really simple in-out feature. Basically, you pull that thing back, it allows you to drop this into place, and then push it back in, it locks, and it comes back out with pretty reasonable ease here. There we go. Um, very nice. Blade guards on either side that swing individually. It's got these paws on the back that help hold your work down and prevent kickback. Um, if you're somebody like that likes to play fast and loose like me, the G0715P also comes with a riving knife, which I just think is awesome because I am a person that doesn't particularly enjoy Having to take the blade guard on and off, I tend to work almost exclusively with the blade off, or the blade guard off. And the throat plates from the manufacturer have these cutouts, so you can easily do fast changes of these things and not have to take the entire assembly apart to get the blade guard on or off or put in the, uh, the riving knife, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a pretty cool feature right there. Um, Every once in a while, I think this might need lubed up just a little bit because it doesn't uh, doesn't quite lock down as easy as they should in their videos, but oh, there we go. That was pretty easy. All right, so what's next? Um, next, I wanted to point out the, uh, the simplicity of stopping and starting this thing. It's right there. The, uh, the power is right there, basically at knee height. So, turn it on, turn it off, bam, pretty cool. It's not, you know, super awesome that it's there, but I think it's pretty awesome. Um, there's also this safety mechanism, which you can put in here, and that will prevent turning this thing on accidentally, okay? It will not turn on when that locks in place. When it's out, good. When it's off, and you're not using it, put that thing back in. Just an extra little safety precaution. Uh, next, I wanted to say, um, oh, the uh, the rip fence that it comes with, pretty great. Uh, so many little adjustments on this thing. I had a uh, aftermarket shop fox fence on my last, my last table saw, and it was fine. Uh, did not have the adjustments that are on this thing. There's an adjustment, there's an adjustment, there's adjustments on the back on either side, there's adjustments on top to raise and lower it a little bit. And <laughs> this thing was just such a freaking joy to uh, to set up. And I even, I went as far as you could see in the, uh, the video of me setting this thing up that I used a, uh, a square and some finger gauges to make sure that this fence is perfectly 90 degrees to the table. Um, I didn't always have that on my other table, so and that's my fault for not setting it up, but at the same time, my uh, my old fence did not have these vertical adjustments, so that was pretty important to me. Um, let's see here. Thing slides like, like a beauty. It's wonderful. Um, locks down. A little bit hard, but not bad. Um, next, oh, the, uh, the angle gauge. My last table saw did not have an angle gauge to speak of, so I'm just thrilled to see this thing here. Um, loosen it up. And 
that adjusts the up and down. And as you can see back there, the arriving knife rises and falls with the saw. That's pretty cool, right? Um, over here is where you actually adjust the angle, I'm sorry. And loosen that up, and there we go. I can't go too far because I didn't put the, uh, actually that, that fits that throw plate pretty good. I don't think I need to change throw plates for any angles. It's wonderful. And it spins really, really smooth. My last one, uh, my last table saw, the adjustments on it were not this smooth at all. So I'm just thrilled to see how nice all these adjustments go on this table. Uh, what else do we have? The, it came with a, uh, there we go. This miter fence. Um, you know, nothing special there comes with it. It's got uh, adjustments for angles. You can loosen that up, do angle cuts. I do eventually want to make a uh, nice cross-cut sled for this thing. Now that I've got a good table saw, I want to do some stuff right. And that will be one of my first projects that I do here. For now, that'll be pretty nice. Um, oh, last thing is how quiet this thing is. Listen to that. Oops. I can actually hear myself think above this table saw. It's ridiculous. That is actually not even as loud as my bandsaw. That is that is wonderful. So, well, why don't we run a piece of wood through this thing, see what it does. If I didn't have such a mess to clean up, I would also test the dust collection. There is a dust collection port on the back of this saw. Or on the side of the saw, I'm sorry, there it is. Um, it'll hook up to a... Uh, four inch dust collector hose, which is what I've got over here on my Grizzly dust collector. I can't wait to see how that thing performs because that's one other thing with my old table saw. It had no dust collection to speak of and the thing just made a nasty mess all the time. All right, he looks reasonably straight. Let's just try and, you know, do a quick rip cut, see what happens. Make sure this table saw doesn't blow up because I'm inept at, you know, following instructions or something. All right. Do, 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 do. We'll just, we'll cut that off. How's that? We'll just, there we go. Oh, and it did come with a push stick. Where's my push stick? Ba, 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 there's a push stick. Wonderful. All right. I love it. Holy crap. That is the best. Um, what else? <laughs> what else do we have to talk about? What else? What else? What else? I know there was something that I wanted to point out about this saw. Oh, um, yeah, actually, it's the freaking manual. The manual for this thing is delightful. If you go through this, in addition to all the obvious stuff, it has an entire section on how to make accessories to get the most out of your saw. So, blade tilt, bevel cut, blah, 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 blah. Okay, rabbit cutting talks about how to make a, uh, an auxiliary fence to optimize rabbit cuts, a resawing fence. Yep, how to make an auxiliary fence for resawing. Shop made accessories. Here we go. Um, feather boards. <laughs> it's got uh, how to make a push stick that uh, basically resembles this thing, but in wood. Narrow rip auxiliary fence and push block. Outfeed support table, cross cut sled. See, all that, that's, that's just 
some pretty neat, you know, not that these are all that detailed, but um, it's pretty nice that Grizzly includes all this stuff in the manual. So um, that's something to get you started with a couple of little projects to get the most out of the saw right from the get-go. And I'll, I'll definitely be making a couple of these things. Well, I think that is about it. I'm going to dig in and start playing with this thing. I'll have lots of new projects coming up. I would also like to thank a couple of people for recommending this saw. My buddy Brian Seward. Um, he is a... Uh, He's a carpenter by trade, very skilled. Um, he recommended this saw. He said his dad has it and really loved it. Um, Brian, I appreciate the input. I'd also like to thank uh, Ken from Top Notch Woodworks. I just uh, developed a website for that fella a couple of weeks ago, and during the process of making his website, I asked him uh, for table saw recommendations, and Ken said he runs, you know, he runs wood on this saw all day, every day. And he, he's a professional woodworker. He's making stuff every single day of his life. And if this table saw is enough for him, it's sure as hell enough for me. So, Ken, um, I really appreciate the input. And um, if you're ever in the market for uh, display cases for um, military memorabilia, check out Ken's website at topnotch-woodworks.com. He really does make some awesome stuff, and Ken's just an awesome guy. So, uh, you know, support him if you can. Um, all right, everybody. Well, uh, stay tuned for some more projects with this awesome freaking table saw, the Grizzly G0715P. Later, folks.